This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Full frame versus APS-C in 2023. Has anything changed? Well, APS-C sensors now come with, you know, at 40 megapixels, so high resolution, just like full frame. This is the Nikon Z8 with a 45 megapixel sensor. So I'm gonna be comparing them in the real world to see if there are any differences now. So I am gonna be shooting with the 56 1.2 on the Fuji X-T5 and the 85 1.8 on the Nikon. I'm doing this because 56 f1.2 is almost the equivalent, full frame equivalent of an 85 1.8. And I'm not trying to this make video this video is sponsored all about by Squarespace. background blur. Full frame, you can get more background blur. We're gonna focus on the quality for this one. It is 1121. This is like the worst time, worst time to be taking pictures because the sun is like right above our heads. But the nice thing is, is that when I shoot in high noon sun, I try to, I always try, there's always a shadow side. And I always try to just light the shadow side. And um, one of the things is like with white clothing and blonde, you don't have blonde hair, but if you had blonde hair, I gotta watch out for clipping the highlights. So, but I'm good here. On her shadow side, I'm gonna light this up and I'm gonna expose for the background or even the highlights on, on her shirt so that they're not overexposed. All right, my settings are one five thousand of a second, F 1.8. Beautiful, oh, that one. Oh, I really like that one. Can you do that one again? Cross your leg that way, yep. ISO 100. My flash power is at 7.5, surprisingly. It's not nowhere near full power. One, two, three. I'm gonna do a waist up shot. Okay, one, two. All right, I'm gonna do the same settings, but 6,400 on the shutter speed because I am stopping down to f1.2 on the Fuji. All right, let's see what we got. Love, again. One thing I noticed right away was how much smaller the EVF was on the Fuji X-T5 compared to the Z8. It was really sunny out there. I just felt like I could see so much better when I was looking through the Nikon's EVF. Okay, autofocus is acting a little weird right now. Okay, one, two, three. Love, again. I tried my best to shoot the same photos with the same composition. You know, looking at the photos that I took with both cameras on my computer, other than the obvious difference in straight out of camera color, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Both files are extremely clean with tons of detail when you zoom in. Also, if you're in need of an, a do-it-all modifier, you have to check out my beauty dish, the one that I'm using. It's 36 inches, making it ideal for indoor and outdoors. And the nice thing about it, it opens and closes like an umbrella, making it super easy to collapse and set up. All right, for the second shot, um, I'm gonna ditch the light uh, just because there's really nice even lighting here. And we got stairs, it's kind of complicates it, adding a flash here. Uh, so yeah, I'm shooting, I'm gonna shoot through these branches here and I'm gonna just center her off with the pillars in the back. So it's gonna be nice and even on each side. All right, now I'm switching to the Fuji. Make sure my settings are the same. Shutter speed is at 500. All right, let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, move around, yep. So for this shot, I'm getting the, there's a curve in the path. So that's gonna be like the leading lines in the background, or I'm gonna try to try to get that in the background. Um, what I'm doing here, the sun is coming in and out. So I'm gonna expose for the background first and make sure the background is not too dark, just slightly dark. Let me see. Um, okay, that's good. Now it's gonna turn down the flash power. Okay, let's see. All right, now we're shooting on the Fuji X-T5. 
um, one two thousand of a second f 1.2 one two three and I have to keep adjusting my settings here because the sun um, keeps coming in and out so Yeah, it's so good. That's why when I get excited, that's how you know, like, okay, some, something's good happening here. So the floral dress does not work with this. This is more of an urban scene, um, but we're running out of time and that's all we're working with so we're going to take this shot even though it, it doesn't match fully the floral with the urban all right here we go one two three all right all right all right all right beautiful Mm -hmm. So sport black. <laughs> Before we get into comparing the images, I want to send Squarespace a shout out for sponsoring this video. If you're looking to start a website, blog, or even an online store, you need to give Squarespace a shot, man. I'm telling you, if you want a, if you want to look professional, you need a professional looking website. With Squarespace, you can get your own custom domain and create a professional website fast and easy. You don't need any coding or graphic design skills. They have 24 seven customer support if you need have any questions. And if you ever get bored of the look, you can easily preview and change the entire template with a click of a button. You got a side hustle. You can start an online store like I did and make some passive income while you sleep. If you use the coupon code Manny, you get 10% off your first purchase. Full frame versus APS-C in 2023. I've done a video like this before, one of my most viewed videos back when I started my YouTube channel. But now it's 2023 and things have changed. Now APS-C, like the Fuji X-T5, now they have high resolution sensors, 40 megapixels to be exact on the Fuji X-T5. In full frame, you know, I got the Z8 here with a modern 45 megapixel sensor. So comparing these files in, 2020, in 2023, has anything changed? Okay, so I'm pretty sure a lot of you are familiar with a lot of the advantages and disadvantages of using both formats. And I'm not gonna go over all the different things. I might just list them here in, on, on the side of the video. But I do wanna focus on the couple of things that I noticed, right, that most people don't talk about in terms of the differences between these formats. And also, you know, look, I'm gonna give you my top three reasons to choose full frame or what, no, no, let me rephrase that. I'm gonna give you the top three reasons why I choose full frame over APS-C. And then also, I'm also gonna give you three reasons why I would choose APS-C over full frame. So this is very, uh, my personal reasons why I would, okay? So I think just that we're all on the same page here, I made this video not to show off or not to only talk about depth of field and background blur. I think we're all pretty familiar with that. If we're standing in the same spot, let's say we're taking a picture of somebody and it's a waste of photo of someone, all right? And we all stand in the same spot and I have a full frame and APS-C camera in my hand and I put the same lens, an 85 1.8 on both cameras, the depth of field is gonna be the same. The background blur is gonna be the same. The problem is on the crop center camera because I'm cropped in more than the full frame, it's gonna be a tighter shot. So it might be, it's only gonna show this. So to replicate the frame of a full frame, which is waist up, you would have to take a couple steps back. Now you got the waist up shot, but now because you're farther back, you're gonna be, you're, gonna, you're not gonna have the same background blur. You're gonna have less of it. So that in a nutshell is that argument, right? Like but I'm not trying to get into that. That's why I didn't choose to shoot with 85 1.2 on the Nikon and show that off, right? I wanna focus on other aspects of it because there's things that people don't talk about when it comes to these formats. So let's get into reason number one. The first reason why I choose full frame, ironically, the first one is that I get a shallower, I can get a shallower depth of field 
with the wider lenses like an 8512. I said I wasn't gonna talk about it, but it is one of the reasons, but I'm not gonna expand on it. Reason number two is with full frame, you are getting higher spec cameras, okay? So right now, if you haven't noticed, full frame mirrorless it has got all the attention with the camera manufacturers. So we've got really high-end full frame cameras with all of the bells and whistles. And with APS-C, you're not getting all of those bells and whistles. You're getting a good camera, it's, you know, but you're not getting all of the juice, okay, in terms of the AI features like in the Sonys and, and all those things, okay? So you're getting better cameras and arguably it depends on what system you get more of, of a range of lenses and third party manufacturers are, are putting out more full frame lenses than anything else. So with full frame, you are getting more higher spec cameras. You got more options for lenses and that's reason number two. Reason number three, this is the one that when I looked at the files coming out of the X-T5 and the Z8, and I know the lenses also, I'm not focusing on sharpness here because I know that this is an older uh, 56 1.2. I'm not looking at comparing the sharpness, but for me, one thing that I have noticed even in the past when it comes to this, and it's almost like when I shot medium format versus full frame, I did a whole video on that. I did notice, an, I did notice that image quality improvement with medium format, it's there. I can argue that that same difference between full frame and medium format in terms of image quality, I see when it comes to full frame and APS-C. So for example, when I'm taking these shots, I'm taking them with off camera flash in the best lighting condition possible, right? Cause I'm creating my own light. So I'm shooting at ISO 100 or ISO 50 on, on each of these, I can't remember. But straight out the camera, if you were to put these side by side, I would not be able to tell you which file is which. They both look perfect, right? They, there's, a, there's plenty of resolution. I don't see any, the image degrading in any way as I zoom in. The one thing that I did notice is that when you start color grading, and these are for my people out there that really like to manipulate files. When you're color grading, the images coming out of both of these, there is just more latitude with the full frame file. So I use Infinite Harmony, which is a plugin in Photoshop for creating gradient maps in the images. And when I'm using Infinite Harmony and I'm, I'm putting the same gradient maps on full frame and the APS-C file, the, the full frame file is holding onto that color and it's taking that beating and it's doing well. It's holding up pretty well. When I do the same thing to the APS-C file, the image starts to degrade and does not hold onto that color. It just starts to just crunch, you know? And so I can argue the same thing when, when I shot medium format, that the medium format file could take color and color grading and it just has more flexibility and dynamic range than the full frame file. I noticed the same thing. And I, I can, I would argue that there's even a bigger difference between full frame and, and APS-C. Yeah, I, there just isn't the same richness in color and latitude in color when you're really pushing these files. So that's really, truly, would be one of the biggest reasons for me to choose a full frame camera over an APS-C camera when it comes to my professional work. You get a really good file out of the Fuji. I mean, in terms of like dynamic range, you know, there's so much latitude, you would have to shoot really, really bad, like for you not to be able to recover a file from an APS-C. It's very, it's very close. But I notice even a bigger difference when it comes to color, and that's the thing. That's what I wanted to really talk about in this video because that's what I saw, that's what I noticed when I was editing these files. Now, for my APS-C shooters out there, I don't want you to think that I'm here trying to, you know, because people get really offended by anything nowadays. Um, I'm not sitting here saying that your camera is inferior or APS-C is inferior because it's all about perspective, and I think that for a lot of people, and it all depends on what you need, there are a lot of advantages. What would be a disadvantage for someone, um, for you know, shooting APS-C, that could be an advantage for someone. Like for example, not having that razor thin depth of field that people love out of full frame, that I love out of full frame, there are times when I, I wish that I didn't have that. Sometimes I, I wish, like for video, I don't always want this razor thin depth of field. There are times where I want there to be more in focus, but I'm still able to shoot at a wider aperture you know, because with full frame, you shoot an f1.8 video, there's a tiny slither of something in focus. With that, I'm required to like shoot at f8 
to get everything in focus. When APS-C, I wouldn't have to go to F8. Maybe I'd have to go to F4 or something like that, you know? And so there's, it all depends on how you look at it. So now from my perspective, APS-C, what are the top three reasons for shooting APS-C? I'll tell you one thing. The first one is the size and weight of the package. This right here, so like, and even being able to, to use a camera like the Fuji X-T5, this, I love the full frame, I, I love the full frame format, but the cameras are just more, they feel like computers, you know? They're tools for the job. With APS-C, specifically the Fuji system, I, I, I now I'm able to use a more, a camera with more style and more of a tactile feeling. It's smaller, lighter, and I, I have amazing results. That is, the, would be the reason number one to shoot APS-C, in my opinion, is the experience. It makes the experience more fun, especially with the Fuji cameras. Reason number two is the price. APS-C cameras and lenses are so much cheaper than the full frame variants. I mean, the camera bodies don't even go past 2,500, I believe, even at the high end when it comes to Fuji. And that right there makes it incredibly easy to build out a kit for an APS-C camera. So if I was, let's say, shooting with the X-T5, I would be able to get a kit like one third the price of a full frame kit in a sense. Maybe not with Sony because you have all the third party options, but with Canon, for example, where you have to buy, you know, you gotta buy their stuff. It's gonna be a lot more expensive. So price, size and weight. And again, back to the, the point of there being more in focus. There are times, a lot of times where I don't want this shallow depth of field and you want to show more in, in what, you know, the environment and especially for video. Right now I am shooting with a full frame camera for video because I, I mean, I'm shooting at f1.8 with a filter and I don't care. I have continuous autofocus, it's, it's not gonna lose me. And plus there's nothing else here that I want you to focus on. But when I'm doing product video, for example, product B-roll, I'm usually at f8 with a full frame camera like my a7s3 because I need there to be more in focus. And with a macro lens at 100 millimeter, there's already, it's, ra it's already razor thin. And so at F8, it requires me to have more lighting in the, in the scene, which requires me to bust out the 600 watt lights to give me the light that I need. And if I was using an APS-C camera, I'm able to use a lower aperture because I have more in focus, and now I don't need the requirement of a 600 watt light. You know what I'm saying? Just like the video that I did about seven years ago on this subject, the image quality of full frame sensors is still superior to APS-C sensors in 2023. So not much has changed, although you know the sensors have gotten better overall. Full frame does have an advantage, but the margin is very close. So close that other factors like size, weight, and the price of the gear is arguably more of an important factor when choosing between both systems. Like, for example, when I compared full frame and medium format, I thought that the image quality was better on medium format, but having the faster autofocus, the smaller and lighter gear, that outweighed the advantage of image quality, at, at least to me. Now, at the end of the day, I know it sounds cliche, but it just, it truly comes down to what's best for you and what compromise you're choosing to make with your gear selection. That is all.